Okay, I know we needed to get back and finish breaking the columns in our scene here, the modeling part that we skipped past, but we'll come back to that. I think we're so close to being done with our wall now, I just like to wrap it up. So we're gonna keep on kind of skipping ahead here and just make sure that we have our wall selected. Noticing that I'm in the material preview mode up in here. You can be in the render preview mode as well, but it's gonna be easier to see what we're doing up here. And we're, we did great by bringing in this image as a plane and then slicing it up and then extruding off of the surface of that plane. So it looks great, except we have these little problems in any place where there's like a, a side that wasn't there when the original image was brought in, right? This top of the beam over here or the sides of the beam, there was no surface there when we brought in this image. We added this when we extruded these faces. So now we need to go back in and fix these. Unfortunately, it's very easy to do. It's a little time consuming to go through and find every single one and fix them, but it's pretty easy to do. But since we're so close to being done with this image as plain, doing it this way where we brought in the image and then added the geometry instead of creating the geometry and then adding the image like we'll do with other objects in our scene here, we might as well just, just take the extra little step here and tidy up these edges. And we're going to do that using the UV editing window. When I click that, all these little buttons up over here are just little shortcuts to different kinds of tool layouts, basically. And in this edit window here, I can back out a little bit and we can see just the image, the, the image texture that is being applied to this material and therefore our wall over here. Now, one of the things that you can notice right away is that there's a little drop down menu up over here and we can see that I have a couple more. I've got the concrete floor material that is the material that's on the columns. Remember, way back at the beginning, I had a column from the, the version of the model that I made that was all finished. I imported it in so we could see it as we were, we were working. Well, that model column, that sample, had its material on it. So when I appended it to the scene, it brought its material with it. So right now, you're probably not going to have that. But as you add other things, they will all appear in here. Right now, you've probably only got the one wall image. One thing I really recommend that you do right away, there's a couple of things that I don't understand why they're not on here by default. One of them is this little button right over here. This is this UV sync. If you just click that tiny little button up in the corner over there, the two arrows pointing in other directions, what you can see now is a kind of a mesh layout of all of the faces that are already unwrapped. And that'll make more sense here in a second. Um, but this also allows you to, to absolutely to just, you know, select a face over here and then immediately make changes to it. So that's a very handy step there. So make sure you click on that little button uh, and you'll see why in a moment. Now over here in this window, this is actually kind of a shortened version of the layout window, just the regular 3D workspace window that we've been using. Now it is odd though that it does not bring in things like the fact that the, the move gizmo is turned on that we turn you know those little kind of touches that you can add to a window they're not over here when you move into a different workspace but that's all right what is kind of odd though is that we're, we're in edit mode which is good but we're also not in the render preview mode so we need to be actually actually able to see that but our little buttons are missing from over here well we can solve that really by just hitting the z key and selecting material preview so i'll just do that now but if you wanted to use those buttons here what you need to do is put your cursor up in one of these areas over here and just click the middle mouse button down and you can see you can slide from right to left that little ribbon of tools over there. So now we can get to those little buttons over there. So make sure that you're in the viewport uh, shading material preview mode there so we can see clearly what we're doing. And now we've got a really good view on all of these faces that are looking a little wrong here. I'm gonna just very quickly, since yours, yours may not be like this, I'm just gonna pop out of this for a second and I will turn on my move gizmo and I'm just gonna move my wall a little bit over here so that it's not uh, buried in the staircase there. If yours is buried in your staircase, do the same thing. Just move this out of the way, uh, and if yours is not, then don't worry about this step. Okay, but now I'm going to hit the uh, tab key to get back into the edit mode, and I'm going to select this face right over here, and let's see what's going on here with this face. So it's got a smeary edge on it there, you can see. When I select this face, you can see it makes sense kind of where it's appearing right over here. This is like looking down the edge of this face. So what we need to do is re-image this, unwrap this face here and all the other ones that are having problems. And we can do those one at a time and I'll show you a couple of ways that we can do this all at once. It's very delicate work, sir. Now, if we didn't already have the image of our wall on here, we could just grab everything and just unwrap it all together and start over from scratch. And we'll do that with the stairs. But we don't want to do that in this case because we'd mess up all of the parts that are working, which is most of the image. Right now, it's faster to just fix these little edges here and there than it is to try to unwrap the whole thing. 
So the way you do this is actually quite easy, is you can either go up here to this little UV button over here, or as you can see, use the shortcut U. So I'll click this one time and just see that unwrap is up there, but you're gonna get in the habit of hitting U. It's gonna save you a lot of time here to hit that U button, and now I'm going to unwrap, and you'll see what's happened over here in this window. So this little face has now been highlighted over here, and if I deselect for a second, you can see what it's done. See, it's going, it's trying to fill the entire texture over here from the bottom to the top, it's trying to maximize its space there, which is okay, except that that's now got this little beam over here and it's got the top beam up over here. So we actually don't want it to be that big. We want to scale this down. So I'll reselect this face. Now be aware that scale and rotate and uh, duplicate and all those things, they all work exactly the same in this workspace as they do anywhere else in Blender. You got to be really careful though to know where your cursor is. So for example, if I want to shrink this face down to better fit a different part of the map, but my cursor is over here in this window, when I hit the S key and start shrinking, oh, that's not what I want at all. I do that all the time. Don't worry about it. How do we undo something? Well, we control or command Z to undo it. And we just move the cursor over into this side. And now when we do that exact same thing, hit the S key to scale. Now I can shrink this face down until it's something like a, a spot that will fit over here on this edge. So I'm going to put it in a spot that I probably wouldn't put it. I'm going to hit the G key and I'm just going to scooch it down over here to put it basically right on the corner of where it is. And I'll show you why that's not a good idea. I mean, it probably doesn't really matter too much. Maybe I'll scale it and make a little bit bigger. Something like that looks pretty good. Now, let's take a look and see why I wouldn't normally do that. You can see this image and this image are exactly the same. So unless, you know, maybe that image is never going to be seen as it probably won't in our scene. That's probably okay, but that looks really kind of weird like like that. So I typically wouldn't recommend putting it in an exactly the same spot. So what I could do is hit the G key over here and I'll just scooch it over and put it on this beam over here. So I've just kind of come over here and borrowed this part of the image. So now if I look at it again, it doesn't look exactly like the, the mildew goes up nicely by keeping it down here where the, where the mildew is or the slime or whatever this is. It's followed that around here. If I were to pick it up and move it to one of these upper ones over here, that might look a little odd because it would be clean on this edge here. So that was a good choice to put it over there. And again, this is just kind of like, well, where do you think it's going to be best? You know, you can do that uh, however you think. Am I starting to make sense? Now I'm going to show you another way to do this. It'll also illustrate different ways that you can unwrap things. I'm going to select this face, and then I'm going to hold the shift key down, and I'm going to select all four of these faces here that are facing this side here, even though we probably won't ever see these faces. But I'm going to turn my camera here so that it is running as parallel or perpendicular, I guess is a better word, for that as possible. And then what we're going to do now is that's pretty good, something like that. I'm going to hit that U key again, and this time we're going to say project from view. And this can be very useful for the kind of things we're doing now, this kind of quick and dirty remapping. So project from view will do this. Well, what's this hap What's happening here? Well, what this is doing is it's basically projecting this image as if I put this photo into a digital projector and then shined it down along the side of this. So you can see this same little rock bit here, it's like this little rock up in here, is being projected over and over again. And that little diagonal, whatever that is, little scratch in the wood or whatever, is being projected over and over again. So that quickly created this little map over here. But now, first of all, they're all in the wrong spot. So, but I can come here and grab this first one. And notice even what's happened here is the first one closest to the view is bigger, and the next one is going to be a little smaller and a little smaller. So it's just as if you were doing it by projecting it with a light from a projector. But I'm going to take this one, I'm just going to hit the G key, and I'll maybe I'll just stick it over there, and I'll grab this one. In fact, I could probably even grab them all. This is These are so skinny, and nobody's ever going to see these. I'm going to hit the G key. I'm just going to move the whole thing up over here. Maybe I'll just scale it and make it a little bigger, and then G again. So... If I were to get in there really close and take a look and see, yeah, okay, it's the same, you know, image being repeated over and over again, that might bother you. You can fix that if you want, but we're probably not even going to see that side of the material at all. Um, and we can do the exact same thing over here. So what I want to do is pause. Oh, and by the way, the, this diagonal that we had to use the knife cut on, it's exactly the same. It doesn't matter. Just hit the U key, unwrap it. You know, here's here it is too big. Make sure your cursor's on this side. Hit scale, you know. And there's a thing that stops you from saying, well, okay, what if I turn it 90 degrees? R, and you can type in 90, or you can just sort of eyeball it and say G. And I'm going to put that little chunk. So it's basically this part of the image is just being copied down over there. That's 
fine too. So you can see there's those two knot holes right there. Well, there they are again. So we're basically kind of borrowing different parts of the image to fix all these problems. This is a great spot here to show you that, to use that trick that I was showing you about, like selecting that little face, come down over here, hold down shift and control or command and click on this little face. And then you'll select that whole row of them and you can hit U and unwrap and do the whole thing all at once. And then this might be a good candidate here for R and 90 and enter and G, and I'm just gonna kinda stick it right there on top of that same beam, again, knowing that it's, you know, nobody's ever really gonna see the top of this, but actually, it turned out okay, that's not too bad. So I'm gonna pause the video here, go ahead and do this for yourself, and we'll compare notes at the end and see how you did. It's cluing for looks. All right, well, hopefully you did uh, a good job there. I just switched into object mode just to get the highlight off of it, just so I can take a look at the, you know, all the faces. Don't worry about these end faces too, by the way. I forgot to mention that to you, but those will be buried in other geometry. But yeah, mine looks pretty good. Hopefully yours does as well. I'm not seeing any spots that I forgot. If you forgot a spot, well, just hit edit and just jump back into it. Now, the reason why I had us do this now is because I'm going to go ahead and hit the seven key to get us into the top view here. And I'm actually going to turn on my wireframe really quick just so I can see where I am. Yeah, okay, so this is the back wall here and I want to put uh, copies over here. So I'm just going to scooch this guy and just put it right here near the edge of the uh, of the scene. And then I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate and then hit Enter. And remember, I turned on the gizmo there, the move gizmo in this workspace. And it's not turned on here because we're not actually in the original layout workspace. You're welcome to do that. Or you can just hit uh, G and X in this case and just scooch over and make a copy over there. Grab both of these, Shift D to copy both of these. And then I'm going to hit R and 90. And let's see, is that the right face here? Let me take a look here really quick um, in the material preview. And yes, it is. Okay, I'm just looking to make sure that the beams are facing this side here. You could go 270 if it's facing the wrong direction. And now I'm going to scooch this one over here. I'm going to take a quick peek at that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we've got the whole back wall. In fact, we can jump back over into the layout window there now that we've got that here. Oh, I've got a huge gap over there. I need to pull this guy forward. There we go. Okay, and again, you can adjust them however you want. Um, so we've got the back wall of our scene all ready to go. Now, the reason why we went ahead and did that step there to do all of this. Oh, I missed a spot. Great. <laughs> we're going to do um, because we're doing that uh, before we made all the copies because now the UV mapping is, is set on all those. In fact, maybe I can just get away with just fixing this one wall here. Uh, I won't make you watch me do that, but I'll jump back into the uh, UV editing. But well, I guess I'm going to make you watch uh, UV unwrap and then I'll scale this down one more time here and I'll hit G and we'll I'll just drop it over there that's fine and I'll go back to the layout window and there we go okay fix it uh, even though it's repeated you know on all these other spots here but I don't think that they're going to be in the camera shot we're basically looking right about that Remember we set up our camera a few videos ago so you should have something like that as a back wall we'll come into the next video here and we'll create a couple of materials from scratch basically uh, with the uh, the shader tab and and show you how to bring in materials for all these objects that we've already created in our scene that are still just bare